Hey guys, Stanford here from Fun, and today I'm with the legendary Team 359 Hawaiian Kids. We're gonna be going through some of the amazing stuff they got on this robot, um, the set points, how they arrived at this mechanical design, because that's a little bit different than I think most other teams. Um, so we're going through some of the awesome stuff on this robot. I've got Maria, uh, Chase, Bowen, and Ernie here to help me out, so stay tuned for all that and more in another episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on Fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, go ahead and take it away, Ernie. Okay, so um, for the main design of our robot, we really um, wanted to use the 2910 robot that we use in the off season. And we saw that it would be a big advantage because it already had some of the subsystems of the robot that was really important to use in this year's game. So our drive tape, our drive chain is the same size as the 2910 bot. It's 28 by 26, and it uses um, the SDS MK4i modules. Um, it's using the L4s, so the 16 tooth uh, gear on the um, pinion, and it's powered by the new Kraken X60 motors. Uh, moving up to our A-frame, our A-frame is exactly the same as 2910 as well, and it's powered by four Krakens. Uh, moving, kind of moving towards the arm. Um, it's so something we changed about this was the telescoping arm. Um, it's now just a one stage, so it extends up to help us score in our amp and our trap. And we only use it for those two because of the size requirement. And we saw that we didn't need the third stage just because we didn't need to extend that far out of our frame to be able to score. So. Moving kind of to our um, intake, uh, the intake is the same thing as the 2910 robot and has the same exact geometry. The only difference is that we changed the width of it to better uh, fit the note into the intake. So, um, so the note is fed into the intake and uses these guides on the left and right. These guides help to center the note to better score it and we use it pretty much when we're scoring and from here it moves straight into our shooter um, and our shooter is powered by two Neo Vortexes. Um, the gearbox is under the arm right now and it's then fed into these wheels so the intake flips down to intake and then flips in. Um, we pretty much score from most of the parts around the speaker and it's pretty consistent. So for our climbers, our climbers are are in these two Versa frames and they ride up it using um, these bearings along these plates. There are 16 bearings on each of these plates and they ride up using the constant force spring on one side and then there's a spool inside here powered by Neo that's on a 25 to 1 gearbox. So yeah, um, another thing that we added kind of later in the build season were these forks powered by um, servos. They would drop down and help wedge a, us under the stage and kind of get more parallel to the floor, which helps a lot with um, scoring into our trap. Um, so it's just something that we kind of took inspiration from last year with our forks that we climbed on the um, charging station. Um, so how did you guys arrive at this kind of shooter design? So I know it's a, a thing a lot of teams really prototyped. Yeah, so we prototyped the top and bottom shooter and we found the exact angle that we wanted to be able to um, be at the lowest position and score from the fender. Um, from this, we were able to use the pivot to better uh, flatten the trajectory of the note. And we saw that the top and bottom rollers were the best because um, it got the best compression on the note. So the compression on the note right now is uh, a quarter inch. And the wheel layout of the um, Shooter changed from our first tournament at Canadian Pacific. Originally, we had two of these wheels on each side, um, but after we kind of got back and started practicing, we wanted to see if we could add some spin 
So by moving one of these wheels over, we added a bunch more spin and now we can shoot from farther and it's a lot more consistent. And then one, one last quick question. Um, these rods that you guys use to balance yourselves for trap, um, what material? Um, they're carbon fiber rods. Um, so like the same ones that we used last year. Cool, awesome. Well, let's go ahead and talk about some of the uh, software tools that help you guys score with this machine. So on this year's robot, a big point of emphasis for us was using a lot more vision in our the systems that we use. So on both the front and uh, back of the robot, we have a Arduino cam, and each one has its own orange pie located on top of the climbing motors or on top of the pivot motors. Um, these are really good for us because they give really accurate pose estimation data and that feeds back to make our autonomouses and our automatic shooting and teleop more consistent. We're also using a Limelight 3 with a Google Coral located under the shooter head and this allows us to see over the intake and automatically rotate to and pick up notes on the ground. Another unique system that you'll also see down here is this little time of flight sensor. So what the sensor does is it allows us to detect incoming robots and fold our over the bumper intake in order to protect it as if it was almost uh, under the bumper intake and prevent from damage, especially in those uh, midline rushes at the beginning of matches. Cool, awesome. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the uh, next feature of this little robot. So one of the big things we want to do with our robot is to make sure that it's as reliable as possible with the wiring. So one of the things that we do is we run two CAN buses. We run one in yellow, as you can see right here, and one in purple. And this is just to make a redundant CAN bus that we can always fall back on in case something breaks in one of the CAN buses and we need to quickly fix it. We can't spend the time on fixing it. And so we run that all the way from the bottom here up to the top of the arm and then into the uh, intake, which you can see there are vampire clips right here. And those all connect all of the devices on the intake to our CAN bus two times. And um, another feature that we really wanted to use this season was LED control. So with our LEDs, we have status signals such as uh, which alliance we're on, the status of our robot. So as you can see, these are bouncing, which means it has no note. And this means that it's spinning up. And when you put a note in, these go solid. As you can see right there, that means that we have a note and you can tell. And there are some other ones that we use on disable, such as when you press the buttons over there, the one that does coast mode, this starts blinking so you can tell that it's in coast mode, you can turn it off. And there's also a button for zeroing. So if the robot is not zeroed, the color of this stays solid. And then once it does zero, it turns white. And we also have a couple more wiring features such as um, these disconnects right here. This is so that we can easily swap the arm. So if we have to pull this whole thing off, it all disconnects right here and we can just connect it back to the new arm. And that's something that we really want to have is a quick swappability with all of our mechanisms. And how long have you guys been doing the re redundant CAN buses? Um, I believe four years, three years. So. Wow. We've been trying to do that just so that we don't have any issues at tournament and to keep things running as smooth as possible. All right, and uh, let's go ahead and go through the uh, set points that you guys have just in case all this amazing vision stuff uh, doesn't work out. So for some reason, if we do have some sort of issue on the field, like uh, the photon vision disconnecting or some sort of issues causing our pose estimation to go bad, we have set points that enable us to continue to be consistent and uh, produce on the field. So Chase is gonna run through his different buttons now. So each one of these is tuned to a specific location on the field. So um, there are areas where our driver knows to go to and then we can just run this in order to allow us to easily score. The other button he has is the amp, which uses motion magic and only one button to automatically move and then score into the amp. Um, this system for the amp is really reliable for us because it's no handing off and um, it's been really consistent for us at both of our events. And then moving into our trap, we have uh, one button to move everything into position to prepare for that. We then go onto the chain and then press another button. This moves the robot and climbs. We also added a, a linear servo that opens the trap door at this event, which has greatly improved how consistent we've been able to be on the trap. 
And I can say these guys are one of the most consistent trap robots here at uh, San Diego. So it's been a very, very incredible machine to watch. So this has been your tour of this incredible machine here at the San Diego Regional. Um, these guys have been amazing to watch here. Um, currently played a couple of quals. They've looked absolutely incredible. Uh, so check these guys out at Midwest, Hawaii, and the championships. So thank you very much for allowing us to come and see this robot and good luck out on the field. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.